Hello! In this video, I will be talking about heart health and breast cancer and its treatment. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, so there's always something new to watch. So when we think about breast cancer and we think about risk factors for breast cancer, some of the same ones are associated with risk factors for cardiovascular disease. I'm going to take just a pause and explain what I mean by cardiovascular disease. So we know cardiac disease involves the heart. Cardiovascular refers to the whole system. So the veins and arteries and the heart and sometimes even the lungs will be included when we talk about cardiovascular health and cardiovascular disease. One would think that if you're diagnosed with breast cancer, that's the only thing you need. You don't need to have heart disease, but we know that heart disease is the number one disease in men and women nearly throughout the whole world, though in other parts of the country other than the US and Canada and Europe, there are also infectious diseases that are actually more life-threatening. But when we talk about breast cancer and we talk about its treatment, there are some treatments that, are, that do impact cardiovascular health. And I'd like to go through each of these and then I'll loop back to some of the similar risk factors and how those may affect the risk of cardiovascular disease during and after breast cancer treatment. So the treatment most well known for hurting the heart is the anthracycline class of medication. And the three anthracyclines used most often are doxorubicin, epirubicin, and donorubicin. These are very effective drugs in the treatment of most breast cancers and are part of people's treatment in many cases. These drugs, these chemotherapy drugs, work by creating free radicals and that's how they kill cancer cells. They also do what's called intercalating into the DNA of cancer DNA as it's trying to divide. So they mess with the division of DNA. And then they also interfere with the repair of DNA within cancer cells. These very same activities of the anti-cancer action of these drugs can affect the heart. In particular, the thought is that free radicals affect the heart's health. At least that's one way by which we think anthracyclines can affect the heart. And most commonly, the anthracyclines affect the pump function of the heart. So the heart is a pump and it has valves and it also has blood vessels that feed the heart. But the most common way in which the anthracyclines affect the heart are through affecting the pump function of the heart as the heart pumps. If somebody has a family history of heart attacks in their family, this does not appear to increase the risk of anthracycline associated cardiac dysfunction in terms of the pump function of the heart. We're going to have a separate video about the anthracycline specific effect on the heart in terms of all the effects that anthracyclines can cause. But I want to turn now to the targeted therapies. So the targeted therapies, in particular drugs that target HER2, are associated with diminishment of the pump function of the heart, just like the anthracyclines. And it's thought that there are HER2 receptors on the heart, and we know we know that there are, and that the, and the HER2 targeted therapies can affect the HER2 receptors that are present on really all normal tissues, but in particular in this case on the heart. So that's another class of drug that can affect the heart. When radiation therapy affects the heart, if the therapy is targeted at the heart tissue, radiation therapy can also affect the heart. We know modern planning techniques really spare the heart, so using um, techniques like CT planning, radiation doctors are able to avoid radiating the heart for the most part. So very little of the heart is exposed to radiation therapy. 
Uh, it's even less common on the right side and on the left side. This used to be a risk factor for radiation therapy induced cardiotoxicity, but again, with current planning techniques, very little of the heart and lung are radiated. If somebody received radiation therapy 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they may have heart problems from radiation therapy. What about endocrine therapy? It looks as though tamoxifen is actually protective and decreases the risk of heart disease, probably by raising, by lowering LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol. So tamoxifen is associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular events. What about the aromatase inhibitors? Well, the aromatase inhibitors, and you may want to check out some of our other videos about the aromatase inhibitors, lower estrogen in the body and are associated with an increase in cholesterol, an increase in the risk of high blood pressure. And that's probably the way in which we see a higher risk of heart problems in people on aromatase inhibitors compared with tamoxifen and compared with placebo. So the aromatase inhibitors affect the heart most likely by increasing cholesterol and by increasing high blood pressure. So those are the therapies that we think about when we think about cardiovascular problems. The checkpoint inhibitors, another class of drugs, can cause inflammation of the lung and inflammation of the heart. And that's really their, their main uh, side effect of the checkpoint inhibitors is inf inflammatory responses of the endocrine system, the skin, pretty much every part of the body. So I've covered all the treatments that can affect the heart. What is the actual risk of this happening? These are well-known side effects but not very common side effects. So we see these in one in 100 people to one in 20 people, which to me seems like a lot. And this is why we try not to use medications or treatments that can affect the heart unless there's a true benefit in terms of reducing the risk of the cancer coming back and reducing the risk of dying of breast cancer. These are not trivial side effects. The very serious toxicity from heart events is quite uncommon, but it's common enough we monitor for it. So how do we monitor for cardiac toxicity? Well, in people who are going to get anthracyclines or targeted therapy or treatments we know are associated with cardiotoxicity, we will usually do a test before starting these treatments. That is what the clinical trials did. People were required to have an echocardiogram, which is basically an ultrasound of the heart, or another test called an MUGA or MUGA test. Not a very romantic name, but um, a very good test for looking at cardiac toxicity. The MUGA test requires that you have an intravenous injection. And so it's often the case when we're starting somebody on treatment that an echocardiogram will be done because we need to follow that up in people on long-term treatment. So in somebody who's going to be on targeted therapy, like HER2 targeted therapy, the recommendation is that they have a uh, test to look at the heart function before and then during treatment. And people on it long-term who've had no cardiac problems, the test of the heart can be done less often so every six months or so, or if people have symptoms. So I think it would be good to talk about clinical monitoring of heart function during treatment. Why do we ask you all these questions and what should you let us know about? So if you develop shortness of breath, swelling in the extremities, wheezing, an increase in your weight, and you're on treatment, for breast cancer like chemotherapy or targeted therapy, this might prompt us to take a look at your heart function even before that scheduled test. So we want to monitor you with testing, but we also want to monitor your symptoms. Now we do tend to see with targeted therapy that heart problems usually arise within the first three to six months, but not always. Fewer people are affected after that, 
but especially early on on targeted therapy, you want to let your oncology team know if you're having shortness of breath, sudden weight gain, swelling, especially of the legs, the lower legs first, and then the thighs, also the upper extremities. If you're having shortness of breath when you move or exercise, go upstairs or walk a longer distance. On chemotherapy, if you're going to receive a typical course of chemotherapy and your heart looks good at the beginning, we tend not to do follow-up tests unless you develop symptoms. So we don't tend to schedule a test in the mid middle or at the end if you're doing well clinically. And by clinically, I mean physical exam and in terms of your symptoms. There are some people who are at higher risk of having cardiovascular problems from anti-cancer therapy, people who already have underlying heart problems. While it doesn't mean you can't have the best treatment for you, it does mean we're going to follow you more closely. If you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, you might be at higher risk of having heart problems. If you're a smoker, you might be at higher risk. One of the many reasons that we recommend that you try to stop smoking, if you can, check out our video about quitting smoking. So those are the risk factors in addition to the treatment itself. And in general, with chemotherapy, the more anthracycline you get, the higher the risk of getting heart problems. So a typical four to six treatments, the risk is very low. And people who are getting longer treatment because they have advanced disease and it's working, we tend to see higher risks. So, you know, up to five or even 10% of people. How do we treat heart disease, especially problems with the pump? We will have you uh, get treated with specialized drugs that your primary care doctor can recommend, your oncologist can prescribe, but in general, we will recommend that you be treated and seen by somebody who specializes in cardiovascular health. We do recommend really good control of blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure and you're getting one of the drugs we know can affect your heart health, we will recommend that you monitor and get really good treatment, really good control of your blood pressure. That might be done with a cardiologist or with your primary care doctor. Your primary care doctor is really good at managing hypertension, but we do wanna be more, um, more attentive to blood pressure problems during treatment with or in people at risk for cardiovascular toxicity from breast cancer treatment. So here's a question that's been answered on, with a lot of research studies. Is the risk of cardiovascular disease increased in people who've had breast cancer? I mentioned that at the beginning, that there's some overlapping risk factors. Most studies have shown that breast cancer itself, controlling for the treatment you have, does not increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. But Cardiovascular disease is a serious disease in people who've had breast cancer because increasing age is associated with both. Um, use of alcohol is associated with both. Smoking, although not associated with breast cancer, except in people who smoke at a very young age, is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And while hypertension after breast cancer can increase the risk, certainly of cardiovascular disease. As we get older, we see more hypertension. Women are more likely to have high blood pressure than men, and breast cancer is more common in women. So many of the risk factors, diabetes is associated with breast cancer and cardiovascular disease. So many of the risks go together. And one of the things that happens after breast cancer is that people feel like if you're free of disease, if you're free of breast cancer, this is all that matters. And it's actually not the case. It's really important that other diseases be detected and treated just as vigorously as if you didn't have breast cancer. So it's often the case that after breast cancer, 
everybody focuses on breast cancer and are you free of disease? At least you're free of disease. It is really important that we not forget the rest of your body. So maintaining a relationship with your primary care doctor and making sure that everybody is attending to your overall health, including your diabetes, detecting diabetes, screening for it and treating it, your high blood pressure, if you have it, and it's so common, be treated aggressively. And I think that's a message that's often lost after breast cancer. It's a phenomenon often called oncovision, where everybody focuses on the breast cancer, and as long as you're good from a breast cancer standpoint, we're not going to attend to the other medical problems. So check out our video on advocating yourself for yourself. This is another area in which self-advocacy plays a key role. I know I've covered a lot in this video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, click like, don't forget to subscribe, drop a comment or a question below. We can't offer specific medical advice, but we do try to get back to you just as soon as we can, usually within one to two weeks. Thank you so much for watching.